All right, uh, let's call this meeting to order. This is the local planning agency for Southwest Ranches. If we can please call the roll. Chair Breckers? Here. Chair Jablonski? Vice Here. Chair Jablonski? Excuse me. Board Member Albritton? Present. Board Member Hartman? Here. Board Member Kaczynski? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. If you'll please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> no, we were tabling it because we advertised it. All right. Um, before we get into the first resolution, um, I wanted to take a moment. Um, I think most everybody here knows who Newell Hollingsworth is and Joanne. Um, they lost their son in the last week, and I just wanted to take a moment of silence, please, if you'll join me. Thank you. All right. Um, item number three, the resolution. Yeah, Ma Mayor. Yeah. D Russell, do you need it read into the record, or we're okay. just doing a tabling on this? I yeah. Don't think we do. Yeah, Mayor. This this was on the agenda because we had an advertising requirement right. that we needed to meet, which which is is the reason it's on the agenda for this evening for the LPA and for the council meeting. The item itself was not ready to be heard. So staff is asking for a tabling of this item to time certain, September 12th. Perfect. So Perfect. you need yeah, a motion I, to table it? Second. Yes, but before we do, um, I just want to say one word about it. And once it's tabled, it's, uh, it's done. So we can just hold this for a second. This was an item that I actually requested was to be put on here. Um, a lot of times we look at, uh, you know, we are doing defensive things because one issue or another is kind of encroaching on Southwest ranches. and. Uh, working against our rural lifestyle. And so this was something that I wanted to get on the books. It's, it's promoting our rural lifestyle through um, a variety of rural activities that um, right now are difficult to, to run because of a variety of reasons. And so, um, so one of the things that we talked about as a council when we first, uh, right after the election and got together, was trying to come up with things to be a little bit more proactive about promoting um, our rural lifestyle, our equestrian lifestyle, our farms, um, all of those things. And uh, this, is, this is an outgrowth of that. So it does need more work. Um, it will come back. But um, I thought I'd just say a few words about it, why, why, it was, uh, why it's here, and what we hope to accomplish through it. So with that, I'll take a moment. Uh, Mayor, yep. I, I wouldn't even table it to a time certain. I would just table it. Uh, we're gonna have to re-advertise it anyway, and I don't know when you're gonna want. It to may take a few iterations. Yeah, yeah. figure. Okay, makes sense. Motion to table. Second. If you can please call the roll. Board Member Albritton. Yes. Board Member Hartman. Yes. Board Member Kaczynski. Yes. Vice Chair Jablonski. Yes. Chair Breckers. Yes. Motion to table passes. Thank you. And then we have the uh, approval of the minutes from July 28th. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion, a second. Is there any corrections or adjustments to the minutes? Seeing none, any public corrections or adjustments to the minutes? Seeing none, Russell, if you could please call the roll. Board Member Albritton? Yes. Board Member Hartman? Yes. Board Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Chair Jablonski? Yes. Chair Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion, motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Gary. All right. We are adjourned. Um, and now we will call to order the regular meeting for the town of Southwest Ranches. Can we please call the roll? Mayor Brightcruz? Here. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Here. Councilmember Albritton? Present. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Great. Thank you. If you'll please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, our first item on the agenda is a proclamation. Um, we've had a... Uh, uh, 
We've actually been touched by this numerous times just in the last few years. Um, and this is a proclamation for, uh, towards the prevention of suicide. And this, this has been something that has touched our, our town uh, numerous times. So we wanted to go ahead and proceed with this. I think, uh, Monica, um, you're here. Appreciate you coming out. I don't know if you want to say a few words or, uh, or you're good. I am? Okay, awesome. All right. So whereas the town, of, the town council is firmly committed to raising awareness about suicide prevention in the town of Southwest Ranches in Broward County, and whereas the month of September is nationally recognized as Suicide Prevention Awareness, awareness Month, and whereas more than 40,000 Americans die by suicide each year, in Florida, a person dies by suicide every two hours on average. Suicide in Florida far outnumbers homicides. And whereas suicide is a national epidemic costing the lives of 6,000 veterans each year and is the leading cause of death for first responders, firearms is the leading method of suicide in Florida and the most lethal method. Access to gun uh, triples the death. Whereas the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association and the American Academy of Children's and Adolescents Psychiatric have declared the national emergency in child mental health, and whereas suicide is the second leading cause of death in children, adolescents, and young adults, age 10 to 24, whereas the, it is critical to recognize the signs of depression that may lead to thoughts of suicide, including speaking about wanting to die, feelings of isolation and hopelessness, increasing one's drug and or alcohol, or severe mood swings, it is critical to recognize the best methods to prevent suicide when a person is in crisis is to ask for is to ask the person is thinking about taking their life keep them safe and remove them from the access and lethal means such as poisons prescription drugs firearms get them professional help in Florida dial 211 and call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline whereas the League of Women Voters and of Broward County has provided significant leadership in suicide prevention through community education, creation of their lockup gun safety program, and whereas the Florida chapter of American Academy of Pediatrics has provided significant leadership in the suicide prevention uh, through community education and programming. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Southwest, the town council and the town of Southwest Ranches designates the month of September as suicide prevention month enthusiastically supports the mission of Lock It Up, and League of Women Voter of Broward County Gun Safety Committee, as well as Florida Chapter of American Academy of Pediatrics by encouraging safe storage of gun irons and removal of lethal weapons from suicides. All right, thank you. You wanna say a few words? So my name is Monica Elliott. I'm actually the current president of the League of Women Voters here in Broward County, but I'm a resident of Southwest Ranches and have been since 1992. And I want to thank the council for this proclamation on behalf of the League and the Florida chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, just so you are aware, there is a new number uh, since we put the proclamation out for uh, people to call if they are thinking about suicide or are depressed and that is the 988 number. Uh, suicide attempts by firearms have an 82.5% fatality rate. And while guns are not the most common means of suicide attempt, they result in more deaths than in every other method combined. And so what I've given uh, Mr. Burns are gun locks. We obtain uh, these from the uh, Veterans Association, the U.S. Veterans Association. And sometimes we also buy them out of our own funds. But it's one way to effectively try to reduce the suicide numbers from guns. And then we also have some bumper stickers now. And they say it's easier to childproof your gun than to bulletproof your child. And we all know how difficult this has been in Broward County, especially now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, public comment. Mayor, we have two tonight, Carlos Hernandez followed by Gloria Murphy.
Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted tonight to introduce myself. My name is Carlos Hernandez. Um, I live at 19101 Southwest 59th Street here in Southwest Francis in the 345. I am running for the District 1 Council Member uh, seat. And, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Again, my name is Carlos Hernandez. I live at 19101 Southwest 59th Street here in Southwest Ranches. I've been here 11 years, and I am running for the District 1 uh, Council seat. Um, so if anyone wants to ask any questions or speak to me, I'll be outside to the end of the meeting. And uh, I look forward to talking to anyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Gloria. Does this mean I get 25 minutes? <laughs> You're scaring us now. <laughs> Lori, just adjust the mic a little lower, please, so we can get you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have, uh, I'm Lori Murphy. I live on 164th Terrace in Thanks. Southwest Ranches. I've been here 30 years. Uh, and I do, I love my town. Anyways, I have three issues I want to bring up tonight. And I wrote it all down because I know I only have three minutes and I want to make sure I get it all in. The drainage project on Southwest 164th Terrace in Green Meadows has been a disaster and it took over a year. And just when you think it's over, it's back to haunt us again. The manhole covers were installed incorrectly and now have to be reinstalled. The low bid contractor was a one man band who contracted everything out to incompetent workers. They would show up for a few days and then sh not show up for weeks. Their equipment would break down and sat in our neighbor's yards for months. And half the time, they didn't know what to do. My major issue is that this contractor took on more than he could handle. The project was obviously too big for him. I understand you have to accept the lowest bid. However, all bidders should be pre-qualified as to whether they can do the job before even allow them to bid. I know you check out the references, but on big projects, I would have visited some of their job sites. Some contractors will lie, and others offer fake references. The South, Southwest Ranch's employee in charge of the bidding process, he should be allowed to ask questions first and pre-qualify these bidders before we end up with another project like this. My second item is we've, we've always had pothole troubles, but after the fiasco project I just mentioned, our potholes are now bigger than ever huge and actually act as a reverse speed bump. But the locals figured out where to drive around them and the speeding is still ongoing. We keep calling City Hall, but they don't seem to see the urgency. The pothole fillers came down our street, but they quit when they couldn't fill these big holes. So what are we to do? Which leads me to my last comment. Oh dear, speeders, I have an idea. My idea is to post the number of tickets given out every month for speeders in our newsletter. Maybe if these speeders see their names in print, they might slow down. Sadly, the residents are just as bad at speeding as the non-residents. I know you're trying to get a handle on this issue, but so far I haven't seen any policemen stopping speeders. Has anyone here seen a ticket being given out or blue lights in our neighborhood? I haven't, and the town could make extra dollars from the ticket money. I got nine seconds left, and that's all I have to say for now, and thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you, Gloria. That's it, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Um, I know that, uh, I know that uh, Jim is, is super active about trying to get the speeders under control in your area. Um, uh, he's, he's done a yeoman's job out there. It is, a t it is tough because, uh, um, and I know they've given a lot of tickets out there, but that they, you know, it, you can only have the police there so long and it's unfortunate. So, but uh, it's still being worked on. I'm not, I'm not saying we're throwing in the towel, that's for sure. But, uh, but you know, it is, it is a constant challenge. All right, um, board reports. We have any board reports tonight? Hey, Debbie. Hi. I'll just give a, um, on behalf of the Education Advisory Board, 
Awesome. Just to let everyone know that the Town of Southwest Ranches and the Education Advisory Board is going to um, begin a book drive. So if anybody has, as you're going through things and getting, you know, getting into this new school year and cleaning out stuff, if you have some new books and gently used books, um, there'll be information forthcoming shortly. But um, go ahead and hold on to them. I think there's going to be a drop box at Town Hall at some point, and but there'll be information, and then the the Town and Advisory Board's going to partner with some um, schools that are in need. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. The one-man team. A board For report. Now, Yay, anyway. welcome. <laughs> uh, the Historical Society nominated Josh can you speak into the mic? Because it shows up on the YouTube otherwise. We huh? hear it. There you go. You mean I'm not loud enough? There you go. Now. Oh, my God. I can't hear you at home. All right. Um, Josh Dykes was nominated. The Dykes family uh, came into this area when I did. We actually bought the property uh, together as a threesome. And we made a corporation because the guy wouldn't sell the land any other way. Um, we have a lot of history, but when the uh, society asked us for it, I thought they were still doing families, and no, they're not. And if you're dead, they don't do you either. So we decided to go with Josh, and then we introduced both sides of the family because that's four generations there in that house now. Well, three now, but it's four generations. And um, it should, when it comes out, I gave some pictures to them, and they're kind of interesting. But I am going to get with Doug, and we're going to film the family, and we'll have the interview and pictures, and you guys can run it on the, on the screen maybe before one of your uh, meetings. Awesome. And uh, introduce one of the oldest one of the oldest families I have to bump them on that but one of the oldest families in this town so um, look forward to it great. thank you great thank you Gay. any other board reports seeing none um, council member comments yeah I'll break the ice okay I'll go thank first um, just be brief here we've got a, a, a light agenda and I just want to make a few uh, Announcements. One is the uh, photo contest by the Rural Arts Board for the uh, rant, new ranches calendar for the new year. Uh, the entries need to be in by the 5th uh, Labor Day of uh, September. Um, the Flowmobile has been moved to uh, the 31st of August, and it's also the 21st of September. Uh, the Broward County Property Appraiser will be here on the 6th. It's Tuesday after the Labor Day uh, from 10 to 2. Uh, and sorry, the flow mobile is here from uh, 12 to 2. Um, the budget hearing, real important. It's at 6 p.m. on the 12th and on the 22nd, both dates uh, prior on, before our council meetings. The, 20, the 12th is a Monday, and uh, the 22nd is a Thursday. And uh, just a reminder to everybody that October 1st is the uh, new uh, garbage company, uh, WM, will start. And uh, we have a lot of buildup before that, and we'll have a lot of stuff in the newsletter and, and everybody explain it. But I just want to, you know, you got to say it like 10 times before everybody, yeah. before it all sinks in. Hazmat at the Park is on the 10th of September from 8 to 2. There's going to be shredding, prescription drug drop-off, uh, and, of course, your hazardous and waste paint, uh, grease, whatever you got, tire, tires, things of that nature. And uh, Town Hall is closed on Labor Day, uh, Monday the 5th. So, and that about wraps it up, Mayor. Cool, great. Right. Thank you, Gary. We'd like to go next. I'll go. Okay, thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Good evening. Got a couple of things I want to cover real quick. Um, some new resos and ordinances that we're working on. So Newell came to me several months ago and asked me to put a, everybody's probably heard from him, but put a resolution together that would, um, assure that we, the town, do a better job communicating with the residents when we're going to do a TISDOR project. And when he approached me on it, um, I'm all for improving communications because we've had some challenges over the years 
with residents kind of being surprised. One of the things you know he's looking for is a workshop beforehand with 20 days notice to the residents so everybody who lives in a particular area that's going to be uh, impacted by the next historic project has an opportunity to get out. One of the areas he's raised a lot about is um, making sure we have sufficient engineering reviews of the drainage itself, uh, where the road's going. So we, we always seem to get caught up uh, on most of the projects with, well, we're a little wider, we have to go this way. I mean, there's always going to be site changes. But I agree with him that before we approve the project, we should probably have knowns on all of those items that uh, may pop up in the middle of the project. And particularly on the drainage side, uh, I think we all agree that things may not have even been necessary out in the uh, 190s and 200s when we did the drainage project or the, the Tisdor project out that way. Some of those houses uh, were fine. Most of them were fine. So rather than just... I, I hate to use the term, but use a cookie cutter approach in all these Tisdor projects. Uh, the recommendation is going to be to go ahead and evaluate the site completely to make sure that if we're if there's sufficient drainage, why spend the money? It's not necessary. So I don't have an exact date, but I think this is pretty close to wrapping up. So we should see this sometime in the month of September. Uh, another one we're working on is a vicious dogs ordinance. Uh, you heard Walt Butler out here with his uh, goats getting killed. Uh, I know there's been some other scenarios around town where people have been attacked by vicious dogs, and we don't. It seems we don't really have strong enough uh, uh, laws in place to protect the people. One of the things I heard is the police have to see the action for them to, to, you know, go after the, you know, to bring in somebody to collect up the dog. This is going to, the point is to allow witnesses to testify on behalf of, of the person who was attacked by the dog. We're, we're looking to adopt some version of what Davies got in place today. They had recommended that, and I believe Keith's working on that at this point. Keith, I'm not sure if you're ready to give any kind of an update on the, I don't mean now, but what, during your time? on the vicious dog ordinance we're working on, i mean I, i'm happy to answer now or in one yeah. th in a minute uh, to let you know uh, we were asked to review from the resident who brought it forward i guess originally the, the davy ordinance the davy ordinance has a lot of standards that we felt may be over broad for southwest ranches including someone would have to immediately impound the dog and take it to uh, a specified location so the way that we're looking to rewrite the ordinance, if, if the council's on board, because it will require a five vote, is essentially giving us the ability to cite the owner, but not actually to entrap the dog that is committing the nuisance. And if everyone's okay with that, that's how we'll proceed. Good. It, it will, based on... Uh, What's that? Uh, uh, council member, vice mayor, excuse me. Uh, Jablonski asked if that would take five votes, and oh. I said, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you, Keith. Uh, the last item I have is uh, one of our neighbors reported in, uh, again, I mean, we've had ongoing traffic issues on 185th, probably since 185th was put in. Um, I asked Andy to look into some options, and what he did is he, Jeff Kadem's company has a traffic engineer. He's reviewing the things we've done in the past with lines, speed bumps, and he's trying to analyze some and come up with some additional potential solutions to try to resolve. Uh, you know, one of our neighbors was, somebody passed the landscape rig and, and almost hit her and killed her while she was getting her mail. I mean, that's, that shouldn't be a high risk place or activity. So uh, what, what the town has done in the interim is put up some signs at both ends of uh, 184th 5th so that people realize no passing. There's a double yellow line on a good part of that, but Hopefully a sign will get their attention as well. Um, that's what I have. Thank you. Good. Great. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, David. Yep. Got a few comments. Um, Bob, on the uh, drainage issue, um, just uh, some of my thoughts. Um, I would like to include some form of community input on, yeah. on, on, on um, when there's a drainage issue proposed for any uh, neighborhood. And um, I looked at that and I saw um, there, there was an absence of the drainage board. They, they, um, the advisory board, it's, it's not even mentioned in the ordinance at all. And What's the resolution? 
uh, the resolution. Okay. Right, right. All right. All right. So um, in, in I, I do basically support it for that issue. Now, on the vicious dogs, uh, you know, years ago I was a, a, a victim of vicious, vicious dog in my neighborhood. Um, and it's imperative. If you are confronted with a vicious dog, report it to Davy Police. At the time I had it, it was uh, Broward. But once you get a record, then it creates a record, a permanent record. Not just, yeah, okay, it happened to me, I didn't report it. You get a permanent record. It, it makes something further to happen down the road. Um, veterinarians are required to keep records that if it's a vicious dog, they, they mark it down in the records as an aggressive dog. I, um, years ago, I had a, um, a mix between a Boston Terrier and a Chihuahua. And at his first vet visit, he bit the vet nurse and they marked it down as aggressive. At that point, I knew, I knew that I had to be extra careful with that dog around new people. And I always was ex extra careful introducing him to a new neighbor because I'm like, you know, he's, if once the vet has that in their records, uh, a very good attorney can get those records and then bring a very nasty lawsuit against you. So that, just addressing the issues that you had speak good. spoken of. Thank you, David. Uh, something that um, I had been working on uh, with administration has to do with redrafting aspects of the election sign ordinance. And um, we are now in the middle of elections. And um, some of the issues that I wanted to, to um, bring up has to do with, um, you know, when I ran in 2020 um, and before in 2016, we had to get signatures of every person that we had a sign in front of their home. And I just thought that that was uh, quite onerous, quite, it, it was very much of a burden because I get a phone call from somebody say, hey, can you put a sign in front of my yard? Leave one at my door, okay. But uh, to actually get the signature, sometimes the, the coordinating with the, the property owner, it makes a little bit of a burden. So um, one of the issues that I'm proposing has to do with doing away, waiving the um, signature of the property owner as long as it is an occupied property. So if it's a vacant property, either a vacant home, vacant lot, um, signatures would still be required, still be required. And then the um, other issue that I um, wanted to um, run it by the council to see if um, how the council reacts to it. Um, you know, when Bob announced that he was running, and I've already endorsed Bob, has to do with, um, I would like to have a Bob sign in front of my house immediately when he was running. It's just my prerogative. Um, and I don't think it, it, it's um, uh, a position that somebody can tell me I can't put a Bob Hartman sign in front of my home. So I think once somebody uh, presents their paperwork with, files their paperwork with the clerk that they can have a sign on their property, uh, that, that person um, can start putting signs out. Those are the two issues that I wanna um, bring up and I just don't know if, uh, how the council feels about those issues. So I'd like to open that up for discussion. You, you wanna just discuss this now? J just in a broad in sense, because I wanna bring the ordinance up at the next yeah, meeting. I, I agree with you with the vacant lot thing. Um, I think that's really prudent and if a, you know, if somebody doesn't like to sign in their yard, they're going to, it's in the recycling bin. Throw it away. Right. Yeah. Um, the one thing I, I, I would have pause have called, uh, is the timing of putting out the signs. Because every election we have a primary. Right. And I could see that getting really mixed up in the primary results, which usually come. Now, after the primary, I wouldn't think there'd be any problem with that. Um, which is probably what two or three weeks before we're allowed to put out signs. A couple weeks earlier. Yeah. yeah. Last and Tuesday. I, I wouldn't see a problem with that. But back in June, um, in qualifying, and and by the way, qualifying used to be in September. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. They, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They moved it in June. And I don't know why. But yeah. it, it, anyway, but that's another story. Um, it, it just seems like the, the the signs would get pretty old at first after for, after six months. Yeah. You know, and you can put them on your cars and T-shirts and things of that nature. Now, you right? Know, everybody knows it's on. They saw them on my truck, you know, and I had them out. And uh, but I think after the primary would probably be the, the be less confusing for the voters. Yeah, you know, it's just my thoughts. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll 
weigh in as well. 100% um, on board with your your first the first point. Um, second point, I, I would I would tend to agree with what Gary's saying. I think from from a resident standpoint, um, having the signs out earlier, I just think, um, to be honest with you, it, it just kind of clutters up the town. I don't think it looks good. To be honest with you, <laughs> even though some of them are my signs, I still yeah. say that, you know. Um, and frankly, from a candidate point of view, it takes a lot of work to maintain and keep those signs up when you could probably be doing something a little bit more productive. And I think that's uh, so. From I don't like it really from either either side of the coin. So that um, uh, that I've got a bit of an issue with. But uh, you know, getting the signatures on on the empty property, I think I think you're right on target with that. Thanks. So. Mayor, uh, I'm in agreement with David uh, about the uh, mission slips for a homeowner. I went around and got them all signed. There's not a single sign that I had out during the 2020 campaign that I didn't have a signature for, uh, whether it was a vacant lot or a home, and I still have those. But uh, I, I was questioning why. Uh, if I put it on somebody's property and they didn't want it, like you said, it ended up in a garbage can. Right. So I'm not real sure that that's a thing that we actually need. For vacant property, maybe so, but as far as putting the signs out, I, I would like to wait till after the primaries are over. You might put it out, that give us three or four weeks earlier, but after the primaries, and then that would be just our people's signs that were out there, those that are actually going to be on the November ballot. It's not going to get mixed up with the others. So, uh, you know, I'd be in favor of that, too. David, I like the idea of reducing the signatures just to the property owners that, or excuse me, the properties that are vacant, whether they're vacant nurseries, whether they're vacant land or, or vacant homes. I think that's a good idea. I agree it's onerous. I had pages and pages and pages of uh, that paperwork that was called in and was found to be up to date and accurate when I got called on it. but. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, it, it seems to be a real waste of time. I get why we were do why that was originally passed once upon a time, uh, but um, uh, I'd, I'd love to remove that requirement. In terms of timing, uh, since I'm in the process of buying those things right now, they only have about a two to three month shelf life, and then they start coming apart in the sunshine. I like the idea of uh, either August 1st or, or the primaries, I mean one or the other. Uh, something that says Southwest Ranches, uh, the people that live here know that we don't have primary elections since we're nonpartisan. Right. But um, uh, they don't last that long, so, you know, they're, they'd be ready for the trash before Election Day, particularly in Florida. So, um, you know, I'm flexible on when, uh, and I definitely support the... Uh, the reduction of residential homes, taking them out. All right. Um, so I got I got a gist of where everybody is on the timing. Um, so um, I'll discuss that uh, with um, with Keith, and um, and take it from there. Uh, now, since um, we do have the agreement of the um, basically of on un, unoccupied properties versus unoccupied uh, properties. Um, I'd like to make a motion that um, the council um, instructs non-enforcement of the signature page, which is currently in the code, uh, for those properties that are occupied. You do not need a signature for an occupied property, but uh, from henceforth, um, any uh, unoccupied property, whether it be a nursery, any kind of vacant property, a vacant home, a vacant lot, you would need a, the signature requirement for that. So I'd like to make that as a motion uh, for this election period. Second. Any further discussion on that motion? Keith, are you okay with that motion? It's on the books that we waive enforcement. Is that is that legal? Are we okay? No, but oh. uh, but, <laughs> but 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 I, I think that essentially you're saying I'd like to make a motion to violate the code. Okay. Well, we're, we're, we're which is an ordinance, so you can't by a motion violate an ordinance. But instead, essentially, what I took it as, what I just whispered to Russell, is its direction to town staff to not rigorously, proactively enforce the code as it related to that provision. That's exactly what my motion is. That's what I figured. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. 
Did right. you run that by me Very one more time, I think, please? I, don't, no, I think it's best we don't, actually. Uh, <laughs> all right. No, go I, ahead, uh, Keith, one more time. Can you? All right. The, the motion is just to direct staff to not proactively enforce the code as it relates to signature pages for occupied uh, properties. That's exactly what my motion is. What's going to happen if someone comes along and questions that? What happens then that... Because it is there, and you're telling the town not to really look the, uh, to kind of look the other way. But somebody comes along and takes that to the uh, election so, people. So I mean, is me, that going to cause a problem? No. Let me respond right. back to that. The town is, a, in general, is a reactive municipality as it relates to code enforcement. There are only certain items that we actually proactively enforce. Phil, uh, Julio could probably give you overgrown properties. Julio can give you the complete list of what the council's decided over a period of time. In the past, the town has proactively sought um, uh, the signature cards, so it was a, under the code we would have act, we actively looked into that. So all you're saying at this point is that we should be reactionary only if someone phones in a complaint about it that we should be looking into the signature cards. In addition to that, I can assure you that based on what month we're in now, which is the end of August, beginning of September, that it would never come forward until after the election anyway, and as a result, it would be in compliance by then regardless. It's just the reality of the month. <laughs> yes, right. And that motion is just for this election cycle. Correct. Right. Okay. September All right. Um, any uh, resident? <laughs> Gay, come on. Give, give us your wisdom, Gay. <clears throat> oh, man, I'll okay. Okay, wait for the mic. <laughs> uh, I was in the back. I should sit up front so I can hear you because yeah. in the back I can't hear a damn thing. But it seems that you want to do what? <laughs> so so what, the, what we want to do <clears throat> is currently on the books, when you put up a sign yeah. at a residential yeah. home, sure. That that owner of that home needs to sign and say it's okay for me to put up my sign, my or election sign. Or the landowner. Sign. Yes, or the yeah. landowner. Right, right. And so what we're what the what this is saying is in those situations, um, you don't we don't need to do that this election cycle. And the reason why is because if a homeowner doesn't want your sign up there and you just plop a sign down, they're going to take it up and put it in the garbage can. and It's going to be down, right? And you can put as many signs there as you want. The next day they're going to be down. So, so it's kind of redundant to ask the homeowner to sign for it. If they don't like it, it's going to go away. Well, I and mean, in the past, <clears throat> uh, we had a sheet, and we'd go around, and we would say, sign the sheet if you're the owner, if you know, whatever. Yeah. And they would sign the sheet, and we would put the signs up, and you're not allowed to put it in the easements. That's correct. And in any public property that's not owned by somebody. You are correct. Okay, so we don't have to do that. You do have to do every everything stays the same, except you don't, you don't have need, to get anybody to sign. You don't only if it's an occupied house. If it's empty land, um, oh, okay. something like that, then you still have to get a signature. But if it's an occupied home, then you do not. Oh, okay. okay. So this is just for this election. Just for this election, because we plan on changing the ordinance before the next election. Oh, okay. Well, I will tell you. I think I would leave it alone, to be honest with you, uh, and allow the owner of the property that's residential to sign the, the sheet whether or not they want it or not. And the reason I say that is because it might encourage people to go up and put it on somebody's property. I have a mm. corner piece of property. Trust me, everybody wants a sign there. Mm -hmm. And I have to sign. They don't bother me. But if I don't, I'll be pulling up signs. Right. So, you know, why don't you leave it alone just the way it is? You have to get it all signed. Yeah, we'll see. I Great. don't care. Thank you. I mean, it's, it works for me <clears throat> if I have to sign. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment on this item? Seeing none, public comment closed. Any further council debate, deliberation? Seeing none, if we can please call the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion All right. passes. And then, and then my last comment, um, as you mentioned at the beginning about Newell, 
Um, Saturday night, I had watched the Dolphins game. I was sitting here watching TV, and um, 10 o'clock, got the phone call from Newell. And a, a, the first one, he was in panic state. Second one, he called, because he said, drive out and pick up Joanne right now. And I was like, okay, I got to get, get, get my things together. I started gathering my things together. He called me, he says, give her a little bit. She needs to adjust. So um, I waited till about 10.30, showed up at their home. I made it to Allendale um, by 11.15. Um, that was going all 5.95, 95. Um, it was, we got there in pretty quick time. And um, it was a very sad, sad, sad situation. And my heart goes out to Joanne and Newell, um, their friends. So that concludes my comments. Yeah. Thank you for doing that, David. Jim. Mary, you're not going to have much to talk about. I'm no, sorry. I'm not. I'm checking things <laughs> yeah. off right and left. My list is only 30 things long, so by the time that, All you right. won't have anything to talk about, I'm sure. <laughs> Miss Murphy, thank you for coming, ma'am. Say hi to Jim for me, will you? You are correct. The contractor that did the work, we will not be using anymore. They will go through, from what I understand, and correct those problems, and I understand there's a number of them. So you, I know you've been patient for a year already. You're going to have to be patient for a little bit more. But uh, it will get cleaned up and fixed up, and, you know, um, uh, I think we'll have good drainage once it is done. Uh, a couple more new projects are going in. It's going to tie yours into theirs, and uh, I think it will drain real well. The Yes, ma'am. I, <laughs> I can't. I, you can't go back. Yeah. So we, we are looking at that. Uh, I know that, uh, Rob, we're looking at that as far as the town's concerned as to who we're getting. That low bidder sometimes, like I say, isn't the best. So we are looking at that. As far as traffic, the Safety and Traffic Committee came up with five recommendations to the council. And we now have the three laser handheld guns. We had one earlier when we bought, now we have three. And we have a special unit that's going around, and they're picking out different spots all over town. They may not have been to 164th yet, but they will get there to 164th, and they're writing tickets. That's exactly what they're doing. We have actually hired them on for a, an entire year, I believe it is, to do nothing but write tickets. I'm sorry if it's our uh, residents that are getting those tickets, but they do need to slow down. So they're, they have been out on 166. I know they've been out towards 185. They've been over in Sunshine Ranches. And eventually, you know, we'll give them a call and mention 164th as a way to, you know, stop them from speeding. But we'll get there. And uh, we've got two new trailers coming. I know you've seen those trailers before that tell you you're traveling 35 and a 25, the lights flash. We're going to put those in the residential neighborhoods to tell people that they're going too fast. And then right after that, the guns will be there, the radar guns will be there, and uh, the tickets will be written. I know I had a young man on my block that got three tickets in less than three weeks. On the third ticket, he told the police officer he will slow down. When he goes by now, I have to line him up with a telephone pole to see if he's moving. He, he creeps by, you know. But it, it cost him three tickets. I don't know how much it cost him in fines. So we are, we're looking at that. Um, the neighborhood talk is Monday the 29th. Anybody here that would like to attend that, it's a Zoom meeting. Uh, we're trying to get the Green Meadows uh, HOA back together, Civic Association. Anyone that would like to attend, contact me and I'll get you the information for the Zoom ID and password. Uh, this month here, um, I think he's not paying attention, but he will, Jeff. Uh, I'd like to have the police department there. Uh, we're asking the president of Roland Oaks to speak and tell you about their association and what they've done. We've had Miss Debbie Green speak for her association, and we've had Miss Chris Brownlow speak about that association. So we are getting together, and the group is starting to grow. It's not much. It's probably 10 or 15 people right now, and it is a Zoom meeting. Uh, all the council's there, so you can ask any question that you want of the council. We keep it at an hour. There's no fussing and fighting back and forth, and um, you know I think it'll be all right. We have a president that volunteered. We have a vice president that volunteered. We have a secretary and a treasurer. So probably I would say within the next couple meetings, we'll file paperwork with, with our, our town attorney and get the Civic Association back. You know, the papers that are up there now are, are 
defunct, so we'll get started. And we graciously accepted a $500 donation from Sunshine Ranches. They um, donated this money to help us get started for whatever startup cost and stuff there would be. It was totally a surprise, but we greatly appreciate it. So probably by the end of the year, first to next year, we'll have some type of association. Now, this is Green Meadows, Deems Ranches, and Ivanhoe Estates. Haven't come up with a name yet, but we got to call it something where it pulls all three communities together. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, and Mr. Mayor, that's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Bob, you have... did you already speak? Okay. okay. All right. Um, we did cover most, a lot of things. Um, just a couple of items that I wanted to add on. Um, the uh, mayor's call is going to be starting up again in September. That is on the 14th, Wednesday, September 14th at 7 o'clock. And um, you can, on, online, or there'll also be the email blast that goes out about that, or you can give me a call if you need any more of the details on that. Um, Farmer's Market is kicking off again in September. Super excited about that. The first weekend is September 24th. So it'll be super exciting to see that back out there again. My uh, local vegetables need to be restocked, uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on was, um, as Gary had mentioned, the uh, WM Waste Management. Um, we're going to be beginning the new contract in October. And along the lines of exactly what uh, Gary was mentioning, um, there are some changes. And um, those are going to be spelled out in, in some education pieces that go out a variety of ways. Uh, we're going to try and educate as much as we can. But I did want to, there, there is some, some talk going around town. I've been called by a few residents. And so I wanted to address that kind of straight on, um, kind of how this works. Um, there is, you know, uh, our, the, the cost of this is going to grow significantly, as you've probably seen by the, uh, the you know, the initial tax uh, notification that went out in the past week. Um, and so, as a council, we tried to do everything we can, we could, to minimize that increase while still getting the service that um, we want as a town. And so, one of the ways we did that was that we have changed so that um, we they're going to be using the mechanical arm and to to empty the cans and put it into the truck. And the way that saves money is that the truck comes by with one individual on it rather than two. So it's a significant savings. Um, but um, what that means is that we have to have their trash cans that match up with the truck to unload those cans. So the can is uh, what you're going to get um, if you, you know, if you don't ask for any special, special handling, um, what you're going to get is a very large 96-gallon uh, trash can. So you'll probably be able to fit a lot more in there than what, certainly more than I think I've got like a 64-gallon, which is kind of the standard size. So this is going to be like half again that size. So it's, it's a really big size. So, so that should help out a lot. Um, if you feel like that is not going to be enough, there is an option to get a second or even a third can if you wanted to. And there will be an annual cost to that. Um, don't know exactly what that cost is going to be. I think it's going to be somewhere around $100, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. Um, and, um, but you can, you can do that if you feel like that's going to be uh, something that is going to be worth it to you. Um, but uh, I say this because just the empty, just not the empty, but just the, the garbage bags that we today would put out there, um, they will not be picked up. It has to be in the can because it has to, so that that mechanical arm can lift it up and empty it into the truck. So I'm um, just going to kind of repeat that a, a few more times whenever, whenever I can because it's, it's a significant change to what we're used to and we want to try and get that word out as much as possible. Um, okay, I think that is good. All right, um, legal comments, Keith. Um, I thank uh, Councilmember Kaczynski for his comments about the Hollingsworth family. My thoughts and prayers go out to them as well uh, during this time. Other than that, no further legal comments. Thank you, Keith. Andy. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I do have a few things. 
Uh, the first message is brought to you on behalf of the Finance Department. Uh, Mayor, you mentioned earlier the, the farmer's market starting again on September 24th. As you know, we have no signage out there on, on the preserved property, and the Rural Public Arts Board is working on signage for that site. That's something that's reflected in your budget books as unfunded for the current year, but it's, we feel it's very important to get that out there. So you will see that at a, uh, a later budget amendment to make that change. It's uh, a little bit under $2,000, but we felt it was important to get that done, and it was certainly a reasonable number. So that project is being done. The signs are on water, and uh, as I said, you'll see that in a later budget amendment. Some good news on the ARPA. Uh, the second half of our ARPA funding has been received. So we're now just under the $4 million that we had expected in the bank and ready to go. So we're working on those projects. Uh, from a budget update standpoint, first of all, I want to thank the council for, for your input during our budget workshop uh, last week. I got together this week with, with Russell, with Emil. We've had some very good, some very productive discussions. The input that you all provided to us is, is, was extremely valuable. And uh, we're working on some, some very solid recommendations for you based upon the feedback that you provided to us. So I think we're very much headed in the right direction. I know that some of those numbers that were approved for the trim notice, I know you've, you've perhaps heard from some residents about that. Uh, we, we are working with you to, to address and resolve some of those issues as best we can. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself right now, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with, with what I'm seeing coming out of finance. We've had some good discussions. So I'll look forward to sharing that with you all uh, upcoming. Uh, as far as the public safety contract, we're continuing to work on that. Russell and I will be meeting with uh, Davie Town Administration tomorrow morning, try to advance that. I've updated you all uh, individually on that. And I uh, expect to have some, some continued progress on that front. I'll keep you posted on that. And the only other thing I have uh, in the interest of sharing with the public and getting that information out there, on uh, September 20th at 7 p.m. here in Council Chambers, we will be hosting a public meeting uh, to get resident input on the Stormwater Master Plan. So that's very, very important. That's our, our, our town-wide roadmap of where we're going with stormwater and drainage in town. We very much want to get resident input. So that is on, the, on the, the agenda for September 20th, as I said, right here in Council Chambers. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Andy. All right. Um, the next item is the ordinance that we tabled in the LPA. Uh, Keith, how do we want to handle that? Yeah, just, Mayor, if uh, the Council would just table it again. Okay. Motion to table. Second. I have a motion a second. Uh, Russell, if you can please call the roll. <coughs> Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Items tabled. All right, item number 10. This is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, accepting and approving an agreement with the State of Florida Department of Environmental Protection to receive $409,422.00 to complete the Southwest 54th Place Drainage Extension to Ivanhoe Canal Improvements authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. A motion a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Andy, you have uh, some thoughts. Yeah, thank you. Just for the sake of the public, I just want to share. Yeah. This is money that was awarded to, to the town uh, via the state legislature in, in the, the most recent budget session. The item on the agenda now is just to accept the agreement, to accept the funding from the state, uh, this project will be surveyed, designed with public input. We'll go out to bid on it. It will be back before the council once we get much further down the road. Tonight's item is just, we're just asking you to accept the agreement from the state for that funding. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any uh, discussion from the council on this item? Seeing none, is there any public discussion on this item? Seeing none, Russell, if you can please call the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Breikers? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Thank you, Gary. We are adjourned.